Did I, did I confuse you there? <laughs> okay, Act 4, we're at the prison. The open country, it says here. Scene 4, oh, Act 4. Act. The two buddies were going to fight again, but... Act 4, page 130. Yes. Okay. Three. Oh. Jailer. Act 4, scene 1, the prison. Enter Jailer and his friend. Hear you no more. There's nothing said of me concerning the escape of Palamon. Good, sir. Remember. Nothing I heard. I had come home before the business was fully ended. Yet I may, might perceive that I departed a great likelihood of both their pardons. For, for Hippolyta and fair eyed Emily upon their knees begged with such handsome pity that the Duke, methought, stood staggering. And whether he be follow his rash oath with the sweet compassion or those two ladies, and to be second them as a no, truly noble prince spiritist. <laughs> Half in his own heart, heart in two, that I hope all shall be well. And uh, neither I neither neither heard I one question of your name or his escape. Oh pray have it in old soul. Be a good comfort, man. I bring you news, good news. Oh <laughs> say welcome. Palamon has cleared you and got your pardon and discovered how by whose means he escaped, which was your daughter's, whose pardon is procured too, and the prisoner, not to be held ungrateful to her goodness, has given a sum of money to bring her marriage. A large one, I'll assure you. Oh, you are a good man, and uh, ever being good, bring good news. How was it ended? Why, as it should be, they that never begged but they prevailed, had their suits fairly granted, the prisoners have their lives. I knew it would be so. Be there, be new conditions, which you'll hear of a bet at better time. Well, I hope they're good. They are honorable. How good they'll prove, I know not. <clears throat> Enter the wooer. Mr. Wooer. You're back to first friend. Yes, I'll go back. Uh, Twill be known. Alas, sir, where's your daughter? Why do you ask? Oh, sir, when did you see her? How he looks. Oh, this morning. Was she well? Was she in health? Sir, when did she sleep? There are strange questions. I do not think she was very well, for now you make me mind her. But this very day, I asked her questions, and she answered me so far from what she was, so so childishly, so sillily, <laughs> as if she were a fool, and uh, innocent, and, and I was very angry. But what of her, sir? Nothing but my pity. But you must know it, and as good by me as by another that less loves her. Well, sir? Not right. Not well? No, sir, not well. Tis too true. She is mad. It cannot be. Believe you'll find it so. I half suspected what you have told me. The God comfort her. Either this, or her love to Palamon, or fear of my miscarrying on his escape, or both. Tis likely. But why all this hassle, eh, stay? I'll tell you quickly. As, a, as I late was angling in the great lake that lies behind the palace, from far ashore, thick set with reeds and sedges, as patiently I was attending sport, I heard a voice, a shrill one, inattentive, I gave my ear, and when I might well perceive, t'was one that sung, and by the smallness of it, a boy or a woman. <laughs> I then left my angle to his own skill, came near, but yet perceived not who made the sound. The rushes and the reeds had so encompassed it. I laid me down and listened to the words she sung, for then, through the small glade cut by the fishermen, I saw it was your daughter. Oh, pray go on, sir. She sung much, but no sense. Only I heard her repeat this often. Palamon is gone, is gone to the wood to gather mulberries. 
I'll find him out tomorrow. Pretty show. His shackles will betray him. He'll be taken. And what shall I do then? I'll bring a bevy, a hundred black-eyed maids that love as I do, with chaplets on their heads of daffodils, with cherry lips and cheeks of damask roses, and all will dance his antic for the Duke and beg his pardon. And then she talked of you, sir, that you must lose your head tomorrow morning, and she must gather flowers to bury you and see the house made handsome. And then she sung nothing but willow, 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 and between ever was Palamon, fair Palamon. And Palamon was a tall young man. The place was knee deep where she sat. Her careless tresses a, a wreath of bulrush rounded. About her struck a thousand fresh water flowers of several colors that methought she appeared like the fair nymph that feeds the lake with waters, or, or as an iris newly dropped down from heaven. Rings she made of rushes that grew by, and to them spoke the prettiest posies. Thus her true love's tied, in this you may lose not me, and many a one. And then she wept, and sung again, and sighed, and with the same breath smiled and kissed her hand. Alas, what pity it is. I made into her. She saw me and straight sought the flood. I saved her and set her safe to land when presently she slipped away. And to the city maid was such a cry and swiftness that believe me, she left me far behind her. Three or four I, I saw from far off cross her one of them I knew to be your brother, where, where she stayed and fell, scarce to be got away. I left them with her, and hither came to tell you, here they are. Mm. May, may you never more enjoy the life. Is not this a fine song? Uh, a very fine one. I can sing twenty more. I think you can. Yes, truly can I. I can sing the broom and Bonnie Robin. Are you? Are not you a tailor? Uh, yes. Where's my wedding gown? I'll bring it tomorrow. Do very rarely. I must be abroad else to call the maids and pay the minstrels, for I must lose my maidenhead by cockland. Twill never thrive else. Oh, fair, oh, sweet. You must in take it patiently. Tis true. Good evening. Good men, pray, did you ever hear of one young Palamon? Yes, wench, we know him. Is he not a fine young gentleman? No, it is, love. By no means crosser. She is then distempered. Far worse than she is now. Shows. Yes, he's a fine man. Oh, is he so? You have a sister? Yes. But she shall never have him. Tell her so, for a trick that I know. Yeah, you had best look to her, for if she see him once, she's gone, she's done, and undone in an hour. All the young maids of our town are in love with him, but I laugh at him and let them all alone. Is it not a wife's course? Yes. There is at least two hundred now with child by him. There must be four, yet I keep close for all this, close as a cockle, and all these must be boys. He has the trick on it. And at ten years old, they must be all guilt for musicians, or guilt for musicians, <laughs> and sing the wars of Theseus. This is strange. As ever you heard, but say nothing. No. They come from all parts of the dukedom to him. I'll warrant ye, he had not so few last night as twenty to dispatch. He'll tickle it up in two hours if his hand be in. Oh, she's lost. I'll uh, not cure. That's a forbid, man. Come hither. You are a wise man. Does she know him? No, but she did. You are master of a ship? Yes. Where's your compass? Oh, here. Yeah. Set it to the north, and now direct your course to the wood, where Palamon lies longing for me. For the tackling, let me alone. Come way, my hearts, cheerly all. Oh, 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 tis up. 
The wind's fair. Top the bowling. Out with the mainsail. Where's your whistle, master? Uh, let's get her in. Oh, up to the top, boy. Uh, uh, where's the pilot? Here. Yeah. What keeps thou? A fair wood. Bear for it, master. Tack about. Oh, when Cynthia with her borrowed light. It's on her, it's on her, it's on her. And then let's skip over to Act 4, Scene 3, with the jailer and the widower and the doctor still in the same scene. Scene 3, okay. A distraction is more some sign of the moon and some other, is it not? <laughs> yeah, she is continually in a harmless distemper, sleeps little, all together without appetite, often without, with, often, 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 often drinking. Dreaming of another world and about, and what a broken piece of matter. So uh, she's uh, about the same parliament lords, eh? And she's uh, forces every business control, fits in to every question. Oh, look where she comes. You shall perceive her, your behavior. I have forgot it quite. The burden aunt was downa downa, and penned by no worse man than Geraldo, Emilia's schoolmaster. He's a fantastical too as ever he may go upon his legs. For in the next world will Dido, Dido see Palamon, and then will she be out of love with Amy. What stops her? Poor soul! Oh, uh, that's not all day long. That's <laughs> <laughs> for it, didn't you? <laughs> now, for this charm that I told you of, you must bring a piece of silver on the tip of your tongue, or no fairy. Then, if it be your chance to come with the blessed spirits, as there's a sight now, we maids that have our livers perished, cracked to pieces with love, we shall come there, and do nothing all day long but pick flowers with prosper prospering. prospering. Then will I make Palamon a nosegay. Let him mark me then. Oh, how pretty she's a miss. Note her a little further. Faith, I'll tell you, sometime we go to Barley Break, we of the blessed. Alas, tis a sore life they have in the other place. Such burning, frying, boiling, hissing, howling, chattering, cursing. Oh, they have shrewd measure. Take heed, if one be mad, or hang, or drown themselves, thither they go. Jupiter bless us, and there shall we be put in a cauldron of lead and ursifers. Usurers, usurers, yes. Amongst a whole million of cut purses, and there boil like a gammon of bacon that will never be enough. Well, how about brain coins? Lords and courtiers that have got maids with child, they are in this place. They shall stand in fire up to the navel and in ice up to the heart, and there the offending part burns and the deceiving part freezes. In troth, a very grievous punishment, as one would think for such a trifle. Believe me, one would marry a leprous witch to be rid on it, I'll assure you. Ooh, how she continues as far as say. Tis not an uncraft madness, but a most thick and profound melancholy. To hear there a proud lady and a proud city wife howl together, I were a beast and I'd call it good sport. One cries, oh, this smoke, another, this fire. One cries, oh, that ever I did it behind the arras. And there howls <laughs> the other curses, a suing fellow and her garden house. I will be true, my stars, my faith. Seven, seven, Ooh, seven. What, what think of you, uh, sir? Well, I think she has preserved her own mind, which I cannot minister to. Alas, what then? Well, I understand you could have affected any man and have beheld Palamon, or I would want her, mm -hmm. but in great hope that she had fixed her liking to this gentleman, my friend. I did think so too, and would account I had a great permirth on it, and give half my state that both she and I at this present stood unfeignedly on the same terms. Let's uh, skip the Act 5 and save you having a. Tell me, all right. Oh, oh very well, mm -hmm. Very well. Thank you very much, sir. Act uh, by Theseus. Scene speak. one. <laughs> Theseus speaks Theseus. before the altars of Mars, Venus, and Diana. Oh, yes, here we are, yes, yes. Uh, 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 uh,
that protegeas both the sepulchre and the tent. Now let them enter and before the gods tender their holy prayers. Let the temples burn bright with sacred fires and the altars and hallowed clouds command their swelling incense to those above us. Let no dew be wanting. They have a noble work in hand. We'll honor and very powers that love them. And enter Palamon and our kites and their might. Sir, they enter. You valiant and strong-hearted enemies, you royal German foes, that this day come to blow that nearness out of that flames between ye, lay by your anchor for an hour, and dove-like before the holy altars of your helpers. The all-feared gods, bow down your stubborn bodies, your ire is more than mortal, so your help be. <laughs> O oh, great corrector of enormous times, shaker of the o'er rank states, thou grand decider of dusty and old titles, thou healest with blood the earth when it is sick, and cursed the world by the pleurisy of people, I do take thy signs auspiciously, and in thy name to my design much march boldly. Let us go. Where was that? Did I miss a page? I think he must have. Uh, did I miss something? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you, you, turned, you might have turned an extra two page. Or something. <laughs> uh, then your help be. Let's go. Oh, and uh, as the gods yeah, go regard ahead. thee, flight with justice, I'll leave you to your prayers, and betwixt thee, I part my wishes. That's <laughs> still not right. Let's go to uh, no, Act 5, scene, right? page oh, Act 5, scene 2, please. Doctor and Wooer are Just back again. Okay. All right, they're at the so weird. Irish, oh, I say. <laughs> Wooer is dressed as Palomar. Act five, scene two, the prison. Yes. Act, act five, scene two, the prison. Enter Doctor, Jailer, and Wooer, the inhabitant of Palomar. Has this advice I told you done any good upon her? Huh? Oh, very much. The maids that kept her company have half persuaded her that I am Palamon. <laughs> Within this half hour, she came smiling to me and asked me what I would eat and when I would kiss her. I told her presently and kissed her twice. Ah, oh, it very was well done. Twenty times had been no better, for the cure lies mainly. Then she she told me she would watch with me tonight, for well she knew what hour my fit would take me. <laughs> well, let her do so, and when your fit comes, fit her home, and presently. She would have me sing. You did so? No. <laughs> oh, it was very ill done, then. You should observe her every way. Alas, I've no voice, sir, to confirm her that way. Well, that's all one. If you if you make a noise, if she entreat you again, if she again do anything, lie with her if she asks you. Oh dear doctor! Oh oh oh, oh, oh dear doctor! Yes, in the way of the cure. Oh, but first, by your leave, in the way of honesty. Now, what else, uh, uh, niceness, uh, now cast your child away for honesty, and cure her with this way, for, uh, first this way, then, if she be honest, she has the path before her. <laughs> oh, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Pray, bring her in, and let's see how she is. Well, I will. But tell her, uh, tell her on the stage why. But, Doctor, he thinks you are in the wrong still. Go, go, your father's a fine horse. Her honesty? And we should give her physic till she find that, uh... Why do you think she's not honest, sir? Well, how old is she? She's 18. Well, she may be, but that's all one. Tis nothing to our purpose. Whatever her father says, if you perceive her mood inclining that way that I spoke of, vilet shit, by the way of flesh. You, are you happy? Yet very well, sir. Well, oh, please her appetite. Do it home. If she curses, if she cure, if it cures her ipso facto, the melancholy humor that infects her. I'm of your mind, doctor. Well, you'll find it so. She comes. Pray humor her. 
Oh, come, you know, Father Mouse, thank you for you, child. And you have done this long hour to visit you. I thank him for his gentle patience. He's a kind gentleman, and I am much bound to him. Did you near see the horse he gave me? Yes. How do you like him? Well, he's a very fair one. You never saw him dance? No. I have often. He dances very finely, very comely, and for a jig, come cut and long tail to him, he turns ye like a top. Oh, that's fine indeed. He'll dance the Morris twenty mile an hour, and that will founder the best hobby horse. If I have any skill in all the parish, and gallops to the tune of Light O Love, what think of you of this horse? Well, <laughs> having these virtues, I think he might be brought to play at tennis. Alas, that's nothing. <laughs> well, can he write and read too? A very fair hand, and cast himself the accounts. Of all his hay and provender, that ostler must rise, be time that cousins him. You know, the chestnut mare, the duke has? Oh, very well. She is horribly in love with him, poor beast. But he is like his master, coy and scornful. What dowry has she? Some two hundred bottles and Ooh. twenty strike of oats, but he'll never have her. He lisp in name, able to entice a miller's mare. He'll be the death of her. Oh, what well, stuff she utters. Oh, my courtesy, here come your love comes. Pretty so, how do ye? <laughs> There's a fine maid. <laughs> There's a curtsy. <laughs> Yours to command in the way of honesty. How far is it now to the end of the world, my master? By a day's journey, wench. Will you go with me? Well, what shall we do there, wench? Why play at stool ball? What else, el what there else? To do. <laughs> oh, I'm content. <laughs> we shall keep our wedding there. Tis true, for there, I will assure you, we shall find some blind priest for the purpose that will venture to marry us, for here they are, nice and foolish. Besides, my father must be hanged tomorrow, and that would be a blot in the business. Are not you, <laughs> Palamon? <laughs> uh, do not you know me? Yes, but you care not for me. I have nothing but this poor petticoat and two coarse smocks. That's all one. I'll have you. Will you surely? Yes, by this fair hand will I. Well, to bed then. E'en when you will. <laughs> oh, sir, you would fain be nibbling. Why do you rub my kiss off? Tis a sweet one, and will perfume me finely against the wedding. Is not this your cousin Arkan? Oh, yeah, yes, sweetheart, and I am glad my cousin Palamon has made so fair a choice. Do you think he'll have me? Oh, yes, without doubt. Do you think so, too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we shall have many children. Lord, how you're grown. My Palamon, I hope, will grow too finely. Now he's at liberty. Alas, poor chicken. He was kept down with hard meat and ill lodging. But I'll kiss him up again. Uh, what ail your hair? You lose the noblest sight that e'er was seen. Well, or in the field. Yeah, you are. And you bear a charge there, too. Well, I'll always strike. I must see leave you here. Mm. Nay, I will go with you. I will not lose the fight. Oh, how would you like that? Uh, well, I'll warrant you within <laughs> these three or four days, I may rise again. You must not from her. Uh, you, uh, but pre still preserve her in this way. Oh, I will. Well, let's get her in. Come, sweet, we'll go to dinner, and then we'll play cards. And shall we kiss too? A hundred times. And twenty? Aye, and twenty. And then we'll sleep together? Take her off. Uh, <laughs> yes, marry will we. But you shall not hurt me. I will not, sweet. If you do love, I'll cry. Oh. <laughs> Act five, scene three. Amelia. So, oh, scene three. Okay. And out. Near the place of the tournament. Oh, so, so scene three, near the place of the tournament. Flourish. And her, Theseus, Apollo, Amelia, Perithias, and some attendants. I'll no step further. 
Well, you lose the sight. I had rather see a red hawk and a fly than this decision. Every blow that falls threatens a brave life. Each stroke laments the place wherein it falls and sounds more like a bell than blade. I will stay here. It is enough my hearing shall be punished with what shall happen. Against the which there is no death. But to hear, not taint my eye with dread sights at me shun. Sir, my good lord, uh, your sister will go no further. Oh, she must. Yeah. She shall see deeds of honor in their kind, which sometimes show well, penciled. Nature, now, she shall make act the, and act the story. The belief will seal with eye and ear. You must be present. You are the victor's mead, the prince, the price, the garland to the crown, the question's title. Pardon me. If I were there, I'd wait. You must be there. The trial is as twere in the night, and you are only star to shine. An extinct. There's mm -hmm. but envy in that light which shows the one the other. Darkness, which ever was the dam of horror, who does stand accursed of many mortal millions, may even now be casting her black mantle over both, that neither could find other, get herself some part of a good name, Many a murder set off, where too she's guilty. You must go. In faith, I will not. Why, the knights must kindle their valor at your eye. Know of this war, you are the treasure, and must needs be by to give the service pay. Sir, pardon me, the title of a kingdom may be tried out of itself. Well, well then, at your pleasure. Those that remain with you could wish their office to any of their enemies. Farewell, sister. The tall black I, woman. Oh, yes. farewell, sister. <laughs> farewell, sister. I hope she is. Oh, yes. I am like to know your I am like to know your husband for yourself. By some small start of time, he whom the gods do of the two know best, I pray that he be made your lot. Our sight is gently visaged, yet his eye is like an engine bent, or a sharp weapon in his soft sheath. Mercy and manly courage are bedfellows in his visage. Palamon has a most menacing aspect. His brow is graved, and seems to bury what it frowns on. Yet sometimes tis not so, but alters to the quality of his thoughts. Long time his eye will dwell upon his subject. Melancholy becomes him nobly. So does our height's birth. But Palamon's sadness is a kind of mirth. So it's mingled as if mirth did make him sad. And sadness merry. Those darker humors that stick be misbecomingly on others, on him, live in fair dwelling. Mark, how you spurs to spirit to incite the princes to their proof. Our sight may win me, and yet may Palamon wound our sight to the spoiling of his figure. Oh, what pity enough for such a chance. If I were by, I might do hurt, for they would glance their eyes toward my seat, and in that motion might omit a ward or forfeit an offense which crave that very time. It is much better I am not born, or better never born than minister to such harm. <laughs> what is the chance? Oh, the cries of Palamon! That he has won. T'was ever likely. He looked all grace and success, and he is doubtless the prince, primest of men. I pray that you run and tell me how it goes. Still call them all. Run and inquire. Poor <laughs> servant, thou hast lost. Upon my right side still, I wore thy picture. Palamon's on the left. Why so I know not. I had no end in it else. Chance would have it so. On the sinister side, the heart lies. Palamon had the best voting chance. <laughs> this burst of power is sure the end of the combat. Lizard the Palamon had Arcite's body uh, within an inch of the pyramid. That the cry was a general. Hey, Palamon! 
but anon the assistants made a brave redemption, and the two hold titles at this instant are hand to hand at it. Were at they it. Miss Mor- Mor- they metamorphosed <laughs> both into one? Oh, why? There were no women were so composed a man. Their single share, their nobleness peculiar to them, gives the prejudice of disparity, value shortness to any lady. Oh, 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 still? Nay. Hey, now the sound is our sight. I prithee, lay attention to the cry. Set both thine ears to the business. Oh, victory! The cry is our sight and victory. Clark, our sight, victory. The combat's and consummation is proclaimed by the wind instruments. <laughs> Saw that our sight was no bee. God's lid, his richness and costliness of spirit looked through him. It could no more be hidden him than fire and flax. Then humble banks can go to law with waters that drift, winds forced to rage it. I did think good Palamon would miscarry, yet I know not why I did think so. Our reasons are not prophets when off our fancies are. They are coming off. Alas, poor Palamon. <laughs> Lo, where our sister is in expectation, yet quaking and unsettled, fair assembly, the gods by their divine attributes, have given you this knight. He is a good one, and ever struck at head. Give me your hand, receive you her, you, him, this plighted with a love that grows as you decay. (laughs) Emily. To buy you I have lost what's dearest to me, save what is bought. And yet I purchase cheaply as I do rate your value. Oh, loved sister, he speaks now as a brave, a knight as e'er. Did spur a noble steed, surely the gods would have had him die a bachelor, lest his race should show the world too godlike. His behavior so charmed me that methought... Alcides, Alcides was to show him soul of lead. If I could praise each part of him to all that I have spoke, your arsight did not lose by it. For he that was thus good encountered yet his better. I have heard two emulus, emulus philomels, philomels. I have turned two emulsus philomels beat <laughs> the ear of the knight with their contentious throats. Now one the higher, and on the other, and then again the first, and by and by out best breasted that the sense could not be judged between them. So it fair, good space between these kinsmen did till heavens did make hardly one the winner. Wear the garland with joy that you have won. For the subdued, give him our present justice. Since I know their lives but pinch him. Let it be done, here be done. The scene's not for our seeing. We go hence, right joyful, with some sorrow. Arm your prize. I know you will not lose her. Hippolytes? Hippolyta? Hippolytus. Hippolytus, you too. I see one eye of yours conceives a tear, the which it will deliver. Is this witty? Oh, all you heavenly powers, where is your mercy? But that your wills have said it must be so, and charge me to live, to comfort this unfriended, this miserable prince that cuts away a life more worthy from him than all women. I should and would die too. Infinite pity that for such eyes should be so fixed on one, that two must needs be blind for it. So it is. Scene for the same, and her palamon and his knights pinioned, 
Jailer, executioner, etc. Guard. <laughs> There's many a man alive that have outlived the love of the people. Yea, in the same self same state. Stands many a father with his child. Some comfort we have by so considering. We expire, and not without men's pity, to live still, have their good wishes. We prevent the loathsome misery of age, beguile the gout in the room, that in lag hours attend for very approachers. We have towards the gods, young and unwrapped, not halting under crimes many and stale, that sure shall please the gods sooner than such to give us nectar with them. We, for we are more clear spirits. My dear kinsman, who, li who lives for this poor comfort are laid down. You shall sold them to too cheap. But what ending could be of more content? Or as the victors of fortune, whose title is as momentary as us, death is certain. A grain of honor, they not or weigh us. Second. Let us bid farewell, and with our patience, anger tottering fortune, would her certain three wills. Come, who begins? <laughs> In he that led you to this banquet shall taste to you all. Aha, my friend, my friend. You'll see it done now and forever. Pray, how does she? I heard that she is not well. Her kind of ill gave me some sorrow. Oh, sir, she's well restored. And to be married shortly. Oh, by my short luck. <laughs> I am most glad, aunt, and tis the latest thing I shall be glad of. Brother, tell her so. Commend me to her and to piece her portion toward her this. Nay, let's be offers all. Is it a maid? Barely. I think so. A right good creature more to me deserving than I can quite or speak of. Commend us to her. Oh, you got her quite you all and make her thankful. Adieu. And let my life be now as short as my leave taking. Lead courageous cousin. We'll, we'll follow cheerfully. Oh, is a cursed ass you made if you've done so quickly, noble Palamon. The gods will show you their glory in a life that thou art yet to lead. Can that be when Venus and I have laid said is false? How do things fare? Arise, great good sir, and give the tidings ear to that are most early, sweet, and bitter. What? Hath waked us from our dream? This, then, your cousin, mounted on upon a steed that Emily did first bestow upon him, a black one, owing not a hair worth of white, with some will say weakens his price, and many will not say his goodness with this note, and which superstitions here finds allowance. In this horse is our sight, trotting the stones of Athens, which the Calcans did rather tell than trample, for the horse would make his length a mile if it pleased his rider to put pride in him. As he has thus went counting the flinting pavement, dancing as twere to the music his own hooves made, for as they say, from iron come music's origin, uh, what envious flint, uh, good as old Saturn, and like him possessed with fire malevolence, 
darted a spark. And for what fierce sulfur next else to the, this end made? I comment not, hot horse, hot as fire, took toy at this and fell to what disorder his power would give his will. Bounds, comes on in, forget school doing, even therein trained as an unkind manage. Pig light, he whines and the sharp eye, sharp round, and he frets at rather than any jot obeys. Seeks all the foul means, a boisterous and rough traitory to dissent his lord that kept it bravely. When naught serves, when neither curb would crack, girth, break, nor differing plunges, disroot his rider whence he grew, but that he kept it into, between his legs and to his hind hooves on end he stands, that our sight's legs, being higher than his head, uh, seems with strange art to hang. This victor's wreath even then fell off his head and presently backward the jade comes o'er and his full poise becomes the rider's load. Boom. Yet he's living, but such a vessel tis that floats but for the surge that next, next approaches. He much desires to have some speech with you, though he appears. Oh, miserable end of our alliance. The gods are mighty, our sight is thy heart, thy worthy manly heart, be yet unbroken. Give me thy last words. I am Palamon, one that yet loves thee dying. Take Amelia, and with her all the world's joy. Reach thy hand, farewell. I have told my last hour. I was false, yet never treacherous. Forgive me, cousin. One kiss from fair Amelia. Tis done. Take her. I die. What? Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> brave soul find Elysium. I'll close thine eyes, Prince. Blessed souls be with thee. Thou art a right good man, and while I live, this day I give to tears. And I to honor. In this place first you fought, even very here I sundered you. Acknowledge to the gods our thanks that you are living. His part is blade, and though it were too short, he did it well. Your day is lengthened, and blissful dew of heaven doth arouse you. The powerful Venus well hath graced her altar, and given you her love. Our master's Mars has vouched his oracle, and to our sight gave the grace of contention. So the deities have showed due justice. Bear this hence. Oh, cousin. That we should things desire do cost us the loss of our desire. That naught could buy dear love, but loss of dear love. Never fortune did play a subtler game. The conquered tribes, the victor has the loss. Yet in the passage, the gods have been most equal. Palamon, your kinsman, hath confessed the right of the lady did lie in you, for you once. first saw her, and even proclaimed your fancy. He restored her as your stolen jewel, and desired your spirit to send him hence forgiven. The gods may justice take from my hand, and they themselves become the executioner. Just open it up and that's what happened. Lead right. your lady off and call your lovers from the stage of death whom I adopt my friends a day or two 
let us look sadly and give grace unto the funeral of our sight, in whose end the visages of bridegrooms will put on and smile with Palamon, for whom an hour but one hour since I was as dearly sorry as glad of our sight, and I am now as glad as for him sorry. And, oh, you heavenly charmers, what things you make of us, for what we lack, we laugh, for what we have, we're sorry, still are children in some kind. Let us be thankful for that which is, and with your leave, dispute that are above our question. Let's go off and bear us like the time. <laughs> From the top. From the top. Way too long. We need to shave off.